Hi everyone and welcome to part three of my preparations for live performances of my original music at the Rogue Festival here in Fresno and beyond. So we've cleared out a little space in my kitchen so that I can start building and assembling the special setup that I'm going to be using for my upcoming shows. It has to be portable, it has to be versatile, and it has to do some very specific things for me to be able to perform my original music live in and duplicate the sound that I created on the recording. So let me bring the camera in and we're going to take a look at a few different things and talk about how this all comes together. Okay, so for starters, I have to have sound sources and I have to have keys to play those sound sources with. Um, we're going to be using two keyboards. This is the Studio Logic SL88 uh, MIDI controller. It actually does not make any noise on its own. It's strictly what's called a MIDI controller. If you know what MIDI is, you'll understand that. Uh, for those of you who don't know what MIDI is, MIDI is a standard system that was developed in the early 1980s and it was so well thought out that it is still in use today for electronic musical instruments to communicate with each other. In this case, uh, the Studio Logic uh, machine can do a number of really interesting tasks for me. Uh, not only can it you know, play the notes, uh, it also has the ability to send other types of MIDI signals. And what this enables me to do is control the entire setup from this one keyboard. There's 245 programmable presets. Each of those presets has many, 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 many messages that it will send all at once. So as I'm performing, I can have my entire show set up in order. So the first sound that I start with is set one, and then as I'm going along, the next thing I need, I just hit a foot switch, and I'm on to the next thing. And not only does the soundscape change, the effects processors I'm using, how things are coupled together, all of it changes all at once, all from this keyboard. And so this is a great foundation for the setup because I can really control the whole thing from this one unit. Now, to make my music work the way it does on the recording, I need more than one sound source. So. The SL88 will be controlling a software program called Hopvirk. It's a virtual pipe organ simulator. It runs on an ordinary PC computer, and so this keyboard will be hooked into the computer to bring sounds in, and then it will also send signals out to the other processing devices that we're going to take a look at, and I'll, I'll explain what they're doing uh, to recreate the sound that I created on the, on the recording. This keyboard is the Roland C200 and it's just really just a digital organ. And it too uses samples. It's basically a virtual organ, if you will, but it's a self-contained machine. And this is going to be my secondary sound source. These two keyboards will stack up on this rack that we're going to take a look at in a minute. And this is actually all of the sounds that you hear on the recordings are off of this one machine. But uh, I need more than that to actually duplicate it live because in the multi-track recording process, this, this machine gets morphed into a much bigger, more elaborate setup. Now, since my music is based on organ sounds and I am an organist, I also need foot pedals to play the bass notes with. So let me move the camera again and we'll take a look at that. This is also a MIDI controller from Studio uh, Logic and it is foot pedals and these are like the foot pedals you see on an organ. These are like what you would see on a spinet style home organ. There's 17 pedals. Now when I'm playing the classical repertoire, the ordinary pedal board is 32 notes long and it's a, it's a much more elaborate thing. For my music, I really am not doing the same kinds of things that you would hear in classical music. Uh, 
so I really don't need all 32 pedals and this of course is obviously much more portable and uh, does a fine job. It too will be plugged into the computer and pulling its sounds from that Hotbrook software I mentioned that the other Studio Logic keyboard will be using. This right here is kind of a special um, little unit that I put together and uh, what, what we have here is uh, a two piano style pedals and when I plugged this unit into the Studio Logic controller it works beautifully for the increment decrement so as I'm performing the show I have all of my setups uh, being uh, controlled from the Studio Logic keyboard and from its 245 presets. So I can go to the next, go to the next, go to the next. If I need to back up, I can do that too. This is a uh, pipe organ style toe stud that I just added since there wasn't a cent center pedal on this. And this controls the damper function on a digital piano in case I need that. I can also program it within the Studio Logic controller to do something different if I need that for this particular show. So that covers the sound source part of the equation, but then there's also the sound processing part of the equation, and let's take a look at that next. So here we have my processing rack. So what happens is we have our sound source controlled from the keyboards and the pedal board. And my music is built off of creating rhythmic effects and um, ambient type effects by using effects processors that do uh, timed echoes and big long enveloping reverbs. And so we have three multi-effects processors. Uh, this first one will control the sounds coming off of Hotwerk. This will control the sounds coming off of the C200 keyboard. And one of the pieces I do utilizes an analog synthesizer and I'm hoping to be able to get my hands on um, a synthesizer module that again can be controlled from the Studio Logic keyboard and that will come into this processor here. This processor, the third processor, could also be used for other things in the setup. It just depends on how this all comes together. Um, all of these, all three of these, are programmable. They each have 99 presets. And again, those can be switched from the Studio Logic controller with the foot switch. So when I hit that foot switch for next or previous, uh, what happens is not only does the sound setup on Hotwerk change, but the setup on here on these processors can be changed as well. So all of it becomes this big, nice uh, coordinated system. And so after we process the signal to get the ambient type effects that I'm, I'm looking for. We mix it all together on this Rolls mixer and then we also have a graphic equalizer if we need to uh, control things to balance out the sound. From there everything is going to go into a pair of Rogers uh, S100 amplifiers which will be mounted on the lower level of this rack unit. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to run the computer sounds from a laptop and this area here will give us a space to set that laptop into. Now the thing I have talked about in previous episodes of trying to set all this up and, and get it to work is looping. So let's talk about that next. So in between producing the sounds from the keyboards and processing them with the echo and reverb effects, there's a process on some of it called looping. And this is how I create those layered rhythmic effects that appear in, in my music. 
most obviously in a piece uh, like uh, what's coming out on time, The Inescapable Past or Regrets, where you hear these various rhythmic elements that keep getting built up and stacked. Uh, I do that kind of stacking thing a lot. Now, I've had, just for experimental purposes, the most basic looper you could get, and I had that as just to see how it would work, and when I was first conceiving of this musical experiment, and it works beautifully, but as I developed the music in the multi-track realm, well, I started realizing that I was going to need a much more elaborate looping system. And that has been a little bit of a concern of mine for what we need to do here. I've talked about the RC600, and we'll throw up a still shot of that. This is uh, Boss's flagship looper. It has six looping tracks. Uh, you can overdub on each of those tracks. It is also an audio interface. It is also a multi-input, multi-output mixer and router. Uh, it is also a multi-effects processor. So obviously I would really like to have the RC600 because that would be kind of the end-all be-all solution for not only doing the looping that I need to do, but also it could handle pro probably most, if not all, of the effects processing. So I'd have one piece of equipment to really again skinny down that setup and really make it truly earnestly portable. Well the thing is yeah it's seven hundred dollars and as I'm going through trying to set all this up and get ready for Rogue Festival and, and, and looking at how I'm gonna budget this I just don't think that's going to happen and I've been searching for some alternatives and maybe set my sights on something a little smaller. There's several things I have to consider that I absolutely need the unit to do. And then I have to think about, okay, if I use a smaller unit, am I going to be able to do all the things I need to do? Well, just really doing some careful research and analyzing the music that I'm going to play. I really think I can pull this off with the Boss RC202. We'll throw up a still shot of that. Now this unit is two tracks, uh, but of course you can layer as many times as you want on each of those tracks. It is a single stereo in and a single stereo out, but it also has a headphone out that I can route a click track through, which is handy for some of the things I do. This unit I can probably do, there's only a couple of pieces that I can think of that I couldn't do with this unit. I would need the bigger RC600 for, but I'm not performing those particular pieces. And of course, I can, there are other ways to solve that issue if I do. Base, the basic issue here is that there's just certain ways that you layer loops where having multiple tracks of loops is the way you got to do it. Simply stacking loops on a single track, there's certain things you can't do with that. So it's a matter of, you know, what I can put together with a particular piece of equipment. Now, some of the things that I can only do with the bigger looper that I won't be able to do with the smaller unit can be compensated for by employing this uh, unit here. I'll bring this out and show it to you. Uh, this is also an older piece of equipment. It's a simple multi-track recorder. So I could, I mean, I don't, it's not the way I like to do things. I could set up a number of, you know, pre-recorded tracks, um, but I wouldn't be able to sync those with other things I'm doing. I mean, but uh, there are some things that I could make work if I bring this unit into the mix of things. And, well, you know, 
you have to do what you have to do. The main thing is to make the performance work, right? So I think the thing that we're going to do is, given the time constraints and what I need to have functioning within the next week or so, uh, so I can rehearse, um, I'm going to go for that uh, RC202 um, and do what I can with that. And then I can decide if I want to bring in some pre-recorded stuff or not. Probably not. Um, and then, uh, you know, build out a show off of that. Just thinking it through in my head and looking carefully over the owner's manuals and the parameters lists and all of the information on the RC202, I think it'll be a good machine that I can uh, do some good work with. So that is where we are so far. Now the next video that's going to pop up on YouTube here is going to be kind of a general update and such for the year 2023 now that we're into the new year and uh, we'll be taking a look at some changes I'll be making to my YouTube channel. We'll be taking a look at some upcoming performances and how I'll be advertising that and letting you know about it. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this little look at uh, getting the gear together for the upcoming live shows. And in the next uh, episode four, uh, I should have something together and up and playing and uh, we'll have a little fun with that. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.